The Files app on iPadOS gets kind of a bad rap for being terrible. And maybe at one point that was justified. But it turns out that today, in 2024, the Files app is actually pretty darn good for what it's supposed to be. And I'm going to go over what you need to know to get the most out of the Files app on your tablet or phone. Now, I'll be focusing primarily on iPadOS because someone has to, but most of what I go over will be broadly applicable to iOS as well, especially if you have an iPhone with a modern USB port. So let's get started. If you're coming from a Mac or a Windows computer, you'll need to keep in mind that the Files app is not the Finder, and it's not Windows Explorer. You'll have a much better time and be much more productive with the Files app if you keep this in mind. Now I've talked about this in a previous video that I'll link to in the description, but Mac OS and Windows are file-based operating systems, meaning that the file manager is one of the most important pieces of software on the system because files are one of the central things you interact with to get things done. Now, iPad OS is an app-based operating system. Here, the app is king, and the file manager is just another app. But I believe it's still Apple's intention to have a computer where you're focused more on what you're trying to do and less focused on managing files. Starting at the top of the sidebar, you have two different views that are preset here, a recents view and a shared view. The Recents view shows a collection of the most recently accessed files across all of your storage providers. And we'll talk about storage providers in a minute here. The Shared view shows the files that you're collaborating on with others or have been shared either by you or to you through your Apple ID. Sometimes you go to share file and you get an option to collaborate instead of send a copy. That would show up here. Unfortunately, if you don't use either of these views, you can't hide or disable these sections. So that's a downside. Next, you have the location section, which shows you your storage providers. A storage provider is an app or a service that exposes its files in a way that the Files app can tap into them and other apps can access them as well. Look at what I have here. I have the on my iPad option, which is just my local files my iCloud Drive, and recently deleted, which shows all the files you've deleted across your various storage providers. Now, if I want to change what's in the locations here, going back to the top of the sidebar, I'm going to tap the ellipsis, the three dots here, and I get a variety of options. Scan documents, which we'll come to later. Connect to server. If you had a file server in your house or something you wanted to connect to the Files app, this would be how you do that. I'm gonna tap on edit sidebar, and you see the sidebar goes into an edit mode. If you have other file providers on your device, here's where you can turn them on or off. Uh, but if you had like Google Drive or OneDrive or Box, those things would show up here if you wanted to enable or disable them. Before you do that, I recommend that if they require authentication, like logging in, you do that first before you try to connect them to the files app. Favorite section is a group of folders that I favorited that I want quick access to. So I have a lot of project folders here. I have my downloads, I have some receipts that go here. It's pretty straightforward to favorite a folder. You would just tap and hold it. And you'll see in the context menu, you have an option to favorite it. You tap that and it shows up in the favorites list. And you can tap and hold in the favorite list if you want to remove it from the sidebar and unfavorite it. The last section on the sidebar is tags. Tags give you a way to categorize files across different folders and maybe even different storage providers that are somehow related. So if I were working on a project and I had some files in Google Drive and iCloud Drive that I needed to access quickly, I might create a tag to just kind of group them all together. Now I do have a tag here for SlatePad, just kind of an example here, some common files I use in a lot of my videos or in my blog. You know, tap on that and I can see those files even though they're in different folders and locations. 
You have a default set of tags on the bottom here. You can tap and hold to rename them, which I did for the slate pad one. You can also add new tags. Oddly enough, the only way I found to do that was to select a random file, tap and hold it, tap on tags, and then you have the option to add a new tag at the top here. Weird, you can't just do that from the sidebar, but I guess it is what it is. Coming back to the top of the interface, we have some arrows for navigating a file hierarchy, and then we have the name of the current folder we're in. A quick way to get back to a random place in that hierarchy is to tap the disclosure arrow next to the folder name, and you get this pop-up that gives you a list of the folders that got you to where you are. You also, of course, have the option to rename, or move the folder, or get info. It's very useful for seeing details about the current folder, the file size and where it is, and what tags are on it. Next, you have the Add Folder button, which, as you might imagine, you tap it and creates a new folder wherever you are. This grid icon gives you the ability to change the view of the Files app. What I mean by that is right now, so the Files app defaults to icon view, so you get these nice, big, tappable icons to represent the files in a folder. But if you prefer a different view, there's some other options. So the list view gives you a list of all the files in the directory. And the column view can be really powerful in that it gives you access to more of the hierarchy at a glance, right? So I can see my root folder and the folder after that, and then all the folders in this folder and easily go back and forth. It's really nice. In this same menu, you also have some sort options. So you can sort by all of these options available here. And you'll notice next to the selected option, which right now is name, there's an up arrow, which is telling me it's sorted by this property ascending. If I tap it again, it applies the same sorting, but in a descending order. If you need to toggle between ascending and descending sort options, that's how you do that. And then there's the select button. And what this button does is turns the current folder into select mode and you are able to tap one or multiple files that you want to perform some action on, like sharing them or duplicating them or moving them somewhere else. You can do that all in this mode. And then there's the search bar, which performs a app-wide search. So if I search for slate pad, pulls up a few things and you see it gives me some filtering options here that I can apply to my search. So by default, it's giving me the recent files that match this criteria with slate pad and the name. But I could also filter that search to iCloud Drive or the current folder, which in this case, there's nothing in the current folder that matches this. As you would expect with a multi-touch based operating system, there are a number of gestures that the Files app uses that you can take advantage of to be more productive. For example, if you tap and hold on an empty space, you get a few options. You can create a new folder. You can activate the document scanner, which is a very handy capability of the Files app to directly scan a document and place it where you need it to go. And you get access to the get info panel, which again, just gives you a summary of some information about the folder, like file size. One of my new favorite multi-touch gestures I actually discovered prepping for this video. If you tap and hold on a folder with two fingers, it's a shortcut to enter selection mode. And again, because it's multi-touch, I could even just drag across these folders and files to select all of them. And the nice thing is if you select one too many files or folders, you can just tap on the ones you want the rest of the selection is preserved. That's something I used to struggle with on Mac OS back in the day when I tried to do non-contiguous selections. It's really easy on iPad OS to do that and I appreciate it. The Files app also supports drag and drop gesture as you'd expect. So for example, if I wanted to move a file from one folder to another, I could use the move option, but instead I'm gonna drag and drop. So I'm gonna tap and hold, which will let me drag the file. I'm gonna navigate to a different folder and then I'm just gonna drop it right there. And I've copied that file to that location. 
and that gets even more powerful when you combine it with multitasking, which we'll talk about in a sec here. Files is a multitasking aware app, which means it supports the standard multitasking options of split view and slide over. These can be easily accessed via multi-touch. So for example, if I want to have two folders open next to each other, I can just grab one of the folders, drag it over to the side, and it opens in a split view, which is super handy. Now if I'm done with that folder, but I kind of sort of want to keep it around for a bit, I can throw it in the split view. The easiest way to do that is to tap the multitasking menu at the top of the window, those three dots. Tap that, and then tap on the slide over option, and that window moves into the slide over stack. Now, I mentioned before about drag and drop and how much nicer it is. It kind of was intended for dragging across two different windows, right? So if I go back to my two window example, actually put this back in split view, make it the right split, and say I want to take this file and drag it over to the window on the right here. I'm just gonna drag it over, and it's that simple. It's moved over. This also demonstrates that the Files app supports multi-window, which means I could have multiple Files windows next to each other. I can have Files windows across different spaces. I can have Files windows in the slide over stack. However I wanna arrange that, that is possible. And how do you manage that? Well, when I go back into the Files app, at the bottom, I get a view that shows me all of my open Files windows. So that area down there is called the shelf, by the way. A lot of people don't know that. It's a multitasking feature that lets you see all of the open windows you have of the given app. Interact with the app to get rid of it, and then if you want to bring it back, just tap the app icon and it comes back. If you have an iPad that supports Stage Manager, those files windows can be free floating, which is nice. So I wanted to come back to the local storage option. So the On My iPad section is where you can create your own folder structure and store whatever files you want. I store a lot of documents here that I don't want in the cloud, and I have a decently structured file setup here. But if you're like me and you want some files on your device but don't want them backed up to the cloud, you need to keep in mind that if you are using iCloud Backup on your iPad, the On My iPad section, your local files, do get backed up to iCloud. So you need to keep that in mind if your goal was to keep your files out of the cloud. The Files app also has a few tricks for us on the home screen. If you tap and hold the Files icon, you get a little preview that shows you a few of your most recently accessed documents, and you can jump right to them by tapping on one, which is kind of handy. The other thing it has is widgets. So let's go into the widget menu. Let's tap and hold on the home screen, hit the plus in the left corner, scroll down to files. You get access to a few recent files widgets. So there's a small version, there's a medium size, there's a large size, and of course, because this is iPad, there's an extra large size, which shows even more of your recently accessed files. The files app is where you would interact with external storage, like a flash drive or an external SSD or an SD card with the right adapter. I'll put a link in the description to an adapter that I like and use from Anchor. I like this particular one because the USB-C port not only carries power, but it also carries data. There are a couple caveats to external storage support on iPadOS. The storage has to be formatted in one of the supported formats. I'll put a list up here on the screen so you can see them. Because I mostly stick to the Apple ecosystem, I usually do APFS or APFS encrypted, but you could do FAT32 if you needed your drive to work across Windows and Mac. Unfortunately, if you have a piece of storage that is not in one of these formats, you're going to need to go to a Mac or a PC to reformat that drive in the correct format. When you're copying files to or from an external drive, you get a progress bar that gives you an estimated time of completion. 
One thing to note here is that the transfers do not work reliably in the background. So you will want to keep the Files app open and the iPad awake the entire time the transfer is going to make sure it completes. The Files app also supports password protected drives if they've been formatted using APFS encrypted. So an example here, I'm gonna take my SSD I put my video projects on, I'm gonna plug it into the iPad, shows up in the sidebar. When I tap on it, I have the option to enter the password, which I'll do here. And then, boom, I'm in and I can interact with it. So that is everything you should need to get started with the Files app. Hopefully you found something to take away from this video. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you. As always, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel on your way out, it would be super appreciated. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video. And with that, I will catch you in the next one.